What's happening, my beautiful people? My name is Mike, and today we're going to discuss custom tactics in a little bit more depth. What do custom tactics actually mean? We're going to define each and every category. What custom tactics am I currently using? And what custom tactics work for making a comeback, creating more high pressure, getting yourself back into a match. I realize we're not in September, we're not in October, this is later in the game, but one of the most frequently asked questions I receive is about custom tactics. People are still very unsure about what to play. If this helped you, please drop a thumbs up, share the video around the community, and in the comments, what do you feel are the three most important categories? For example, build up speed, defensive pressure, defensive aggression. On screen, you see my current custom tactics that I'm using, and I start out playing a 4-2-3-1. Now let me explain what each category actually does in terms of your tactics. Remember, custom tactics are subjective to different play styles. Build up play, speed. What does that exactly mean? The higher your attacking speed, the quicker your players look to counterattack, and they support your runs faster. Everybody is committed to going forward. They're looking to score ASAP, ASAP. The lower this number, your players are less likely to push forward as quickly. And if you play slow, that's not a big deal. But if you're looking for those quick counters, you should have this number, I would say over 65. Passing in terms of build-up play means how close or how far apart your players are going to be in terms of looking for these connecting passes. If you have a low number, they're going to be right next to you. So if you're a Tiki Taka player, you should not have passing through the roof. I keep this almost in the middle. I feel like my gameplay has a decent amount of balance, whether I'm looking for an option down the wing or I'm trying to make some of those quick passes and just the intricate details in the middle of the pitch. With build up play, I think organized will be much more popular and it's easier to use. To summarize positioning, it just keeps a certain degree of structure. I haven't seen many people that use freeform, at least in the build up portion of the custom tactics. You guys let me know. Chance creation. The higher the number, the more players are willing to commit or move out of their structured positioning, so to speak. Basically, they have a higher percentage of moving from their original positions. If you have a lower number, they stick to those original positions. Once again, I'm in the middle and I'm watching my players. Am I happy with their movement? Am I happy with their progression? Do I feel like people are out of position? Let's talk about crossing. And I keep a higher number than many of my peers. The higher the number, it tells your players to crowd the box, to make those attacking runs looking for a cross. The lower the number, they tend to stay kind of around the box and they're looking for passes. Now this category can have mixed feelings because passing from within the box is often more effective than whipping in crosses. However, I almost think that the crossing at a higher number helps you with the width of your squad and then some of those early crosses. And it's just a matter if you're going to use that feature. Is that something that you're looking to create? I take a lot of pride in being able to score crosses with high efficiency and not whipping in the YOLO cross, the random cross. That's just not how I play. But if I'm playing a 4-2-3-1, I like a higher number for crossing, especially in comparison to shooting. Speaking of shooting, let's open up the room. With this category, the higher the number, I believe that players get into more attacking positions looking for those shots. I also believe that it plays a factor in terms of width of your attackers. Do you want them close together and narrow? Do you want them more spread out? Positioning, organized versus free form. If you keep this unorganized, they're gonna make more structured runs. If you put this on free form, you can expect more creative runs. It's that simple. Defense. The higher the number, the higher your players are up the pitch. The lower the number, the more they sit back. So if you had this on 100, that's the halfway line. Aggression actually deals with the AI. How likely is the AI to step in front of players for you? And also, just how they surround your opponent's attacking players. Are they pushed in? Are they compacted? Or are they sitting back? They look like statues, they look like stones. They're not moving, they got the Medusa. And this can be extremely frustrating if you play someone who's low pressure, low aggression, and they don't defend on their own because their players sit so deep and then they don't do anything. They give you nothing to work with. Team with, self-explanatory. I would recommend being somewhere in the middle. Lastly, defender line, offside trap versus cover. Please use cover. If you go with offside trap, you're not gonna have complete control over your back line. Sometimes they step high, sometimes they sit back. That's not good for competitive play. Cover gives you more consistency. I showed you my custom tactics and explained each category. Let me show you an example of what I would switch into. Let's say at halftime, I'm losing a game by one goal, two goals. What does this do? And also I wanna talk about if I were to change formations. Let's do that. Same custom tactics on screen. Let's paint a scenario. We're at halftime, I'm down one goal, and I feel that my pressure play could be a big advantage for 
interceptions and creating easy attacks. I'm gonna get out of the 4-2-3-1. I normally go into a more narrow formation unless my opponent was playing something very wide because then you'd just be at a disadvantage via possession. I often leave my speed alone. I can move it up just a tad bit. Not worried about passing or organization. However, with chance creation, like I said, if I'm going narrow, I want my shooting to be higher than my crossing. If I'm at the end of a game and I'm going a little more YOLO, then you're gonna see more extremes where your speed would be really high, crossing very high, your shooting very high, just to give you an idea. But I do not like to overcommit. I think a lot of people make the mistake they're losing by one goal and they're not patient with their comeback and they end up blowing the game before they ever really got the chance to get back into the match. Defensively, if we're down a goal, and like I said, I'm feeling pretty good about my pressure play, things are clicking okay, we've now switched to a narrow formation. My pressure is going to be somewhere in the 60s, aggression, somewhere in the 60s, even low 70s is good with me. I don't adjust the team width. Now in the same scenario, but it's the 75th minute or even the 70th minute, we got to start going for it. So I'm going to pump my pressure normally in the 80s, the same with the aggression, and it's very important to parallel your mentality with your custom tactics. And what I mean by that, you're looking to be more aggressive. You're no longer gonna be playing on defensive. In the first scenario, if I'm only down a goal, a lot of times I'll go to balanced to match the custom tactics and the spacing in terms of that mentality. At the end of a game, you can find me on attacking or ultra attacking, never on all out attack, ever. And I don't like ultra defensive, they sit back too far and I never play park the bus. Like I said, if you have questions, ask away but I wanted to make a little bit more of an in-depth video talking about custom taxes just because I've been getting so many frequent questions. If you enjoyed it, please drop a thumbs up, pass it around the community, and I have a lot more content coming for you ASAP, ASAP. I look forward to interacting with everyone in the comments down below.